You may have heard the term first normal form before. You probably have a vague idea of what it means. You might have looked it up on Wikipedia and read something like, First normal form is a property of relation in a relational database. A relation is in the first normal form if the domain of each attribute contains only atomic values, and the values of each attribute contains only a single value from that domain. Mmm, great. But what does it mean exactly? Can you actually explain the first normal form to someone who isn't a database hero? Let's break it down into simpler terms. First normal form is all about getting rid of repeat data, or redundancy. If you consider that a database table describes some entity or thing, or a part of an entity or thing, like, say, a person, then the columns of that table should describe the attributes of that entity, like, say, the person's name and date of birth. This divides our table into two dimensions, columns and rows. And that's pretty much it, really. There are a few simple rules to follow in order to get to the first normal form. First, the table must be two-dimensional. Columns, rows. Each row contains data about one thing, or one part of a thing, meaning that from one row I should only get information about Bob and not both Bob and Jane. One column provides us with a single attribute, meaning that each column contains data only about a single attribute of the thing we're describing. So, for example, if I have Bob Smith in the name column, I'm actually describing two things. Instead, we'll divide it up into two columns, a first name column and a last name column. Now, say I wanted to search for anyone with the last name Smith. It becomes easier because I can tell my database management system to search only the last name column for Smith, whereas you can see we have someone whose first name is Smith. And that wouldn't work if we only had one column. Additionally, each cell, the intersection of a row and column in the table, must be single-valued, meaning we don't want to put something like a location column that has two different values in the same field. Additionally, every entry in the column must be of the same kind, meaning that if we had a list of locations like this, where some of them name countries, others name cities, and some even streets, we're not following the first normal form. Instead, we'll divide it up into multiple columns like this, where there is an address column, a city column, and a country column. That way, all the entries in our columns are of the same kind of data. Additionally, each column has to have a unique name. Finally, rows must be unique. Notice if we wanted to add another row here, where, say, there was another Jane Doe with the same exact date of birth and even the same address, city, and country. While unlikely, it is still possible if we're describing two distinct people with what happens to be the same information in this particular table. In order to make the rows unique, all we have to do is add a unique column. While Jane and Jane may share the same name, date of birth, and even address, city, and country, it's very unlikely that they'll share the same email address. So we give them a unique row by allowing them to identify their email address, and we call that a primary key. The order of the columns and rows shouldn't matter, because we always know the name of each column, and since we know that each row is unique, we shouldn't care what order the columns and rows are given to us in.